Good morning. God is great. All the time. All the time. God is great. <laughs> Welcome to worship. We're glad that you are joining us today. Uh, we welcome you who are worshiping on site with us as well as those who will be worshiping online with us later. And we want to remind you that our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And our vision is believing, belonging, and becoming. And we welcome in worship leadership today Janet Hibbs Jones. And we want to do a thank you shout out to all who helped at Habitat for Humanity Faith Build on Saturday. Some of us are a little sore, our arms from going up and down and squats and edging and painting, but we got the house painted um, yesterday morning. So thanks be to God. Also, we want to lift up for missions the Num Ride. Uh, we are still collecting peanut butter and jelly. You can bring breads. Um, this week by the 23rd and 24th and then today a little bit later in the service we're going to pass the helmets in worship and this is a special offering that will help to go toward the num right they have been doing this this will be the 25th year well it's actually number 26 if they would have had it last year but this is number 25 this is the final Nebraska United Methodist bike ride and they have raised over a million dollars for food-related causes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. That deserves a clap. <laughs> and so a, certainly a shout-out to all who will be participating on this year's Num Ride. And tonight at Ignite, tell us about what's coming up next. Yes, well, tonight at Ignite, uh, we're going to be continuing our, we've been talking about Are We There Yet? So we're continuing our journey only tonight since it's father's day and i can tell because for the first time probably all year i'm seeing a lot of dads with ties on so obviously that means it's father's day but we're going to be we're going to be talking about calling all fathers so hopefully you'll be able to come out to the ignite service at six uh, we also have an announcement that i do want to make this year for the first time maybe ever uh, well not ever because this calendar rotates but the first time the, since we've had the outreach center the Ignite service is going to fall on Sunday night, July 4th. A lot of people have plans, and I know some of our music team members have plans. So there will not be an on-site service that night. However, I want you to get used to seeing this face. So there will still be a recorded <laughs> message for you. You're going to be able to tune in at 6 o'clock on Facebook or on our website because there will still be a message for you from me on July 4th at 6. All right? All right. And also went to continue to lift up on the 24th, on June 24th, we're going to hear the author of the book, 24th and Glory. And that is going to be right here in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock. This is going to be Dirk Chatterlin is going to talk about the intersection of civil rights and Omaha's greatest generation of athletes and so let's come and support this event and opportunity like i said before if you love sports if you love nebraska history this is a great opportunity to come and to learn more um, from the journalist author of the book so come and check that out uh, a little bit later in the service we're going to introduce our mica core interns who are going to be presenting during the sunday school hour today in the gathering area we already have coffee we already have refreshments. It's going to be a great opportunity um, to visit with them. They're going to be talking about immigration, and they're going to be talking also about racism today. So with that, let's join in our call to worship. Okay. And again, we wish you all, fathers, a very happy Father's Day. Thank you for being here. And as we take time to worship the greatest father of all, please join with me in the call to worship. The Lord is a safe place for the oppressed, a safe place in difficult times. Those who know your name, Lord, trust, trust you. Sing praises to the Lord who lives in Zion. Proclaim God's, God's mighty acts among, among all people. And let's rise and sing our opening song, We Shall Overcome.
you may be seated and let's sing our song as we prepare our own hearts for a time for the young at heart. I don't know, is there anyone that's a child of God that wants to come up and sit with me for a few minutes? Anybody? Oh, I was afraid of that. Well, this is going to be the message for the kids because I think it's important that we're talking a little bit about this time in different people's lives. And our scripture is going to be about Naomi and Ruth and Orpah and, and what was going on with her. And she's in a very difficult time. As we read the scripture, Naomi at first started off, everything was just fine. She had her husband, she had two sons, things were going well, and then things started to kind of disintegrate, started to fall apart. She had to move. Her husband died, her sons died. Things are not going well, and she's starting to get angrier and angrier. She's starting to grieve, and she's starting to get more bitter. And in all of this bitterness and this anger, she's starting to blame God. She's starting to say, God has afflicted me. God is punishing me. And she's so bitter that at some point she finally does realize that she's going to get to go back home. But the bitterness has even overwhelmed that joy. And she's even told her daughter-in-laws, get away from me, go. I've been afflicted. I've been cursed. God has put his hand out against me. One of her daughter-in-laws did finally leave, but Ruth, as we'll read later, stayed with her and said, no, I love you, I will stay with you to the very end. But the bitterness was still there. The sadness, the grief was still there. And she, even when she went back home and people would say, is this Naomi? She'd go, don't call me by my name. God has afflicted me. Okay, don't call me that anymore. She's in a very sad state in a very sad time. And it made me wonder, have we ever had that happen to us? Have we ever had a point where we thought God was angry with us? God was lashing out at us? God was punishing us for something? Sometimes that happens because we don't understand the rest of the plan. And God has a plan for all of us. And we just, because we don't understand it, doesn't mean God is hurting us or lashing out. God loves those that love him and would never hurt us. And that's a promise that we can keep and we know God will keep. So let's have a little prayer. And you can respond back if you'd like. Dear God, Dear God thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for bringing us here today. Forgive us when we doubt you. Forgive us when we, you. Forgive us when we challenge you. Help us to understand that your plan is perfect even though we might not understand it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing, <clears throat> Let's sing our song of prayer, More Precious Than Silver. We'll, we will sing through this twice.
So as we turn to a time of sharing our joys and celebrations, what celebrations do we want to lift up to God today? Do you have the mic? Yep. All right. Nope. You hang on to it. You can help me out here. <laughs> what celebrations? Any birth? Yes, please check out the Habitat for Humanity um, information and hear Maria's story. Maria has a very powerful story to share. She is going to be the homeowner for 2021 and um, just amazing, amazing opportunity. Thank you, Chuck Kinnison, for helping to twist arms and get people to sign up last week. And uh, we had a great day. We had a great day. Other celebrations? Yes. Helen Schwartz, thanks everyone for all of the love shared for all the things that they went through, and we're glad you're all on the mend. Other celebrations? Any other birthdays or anniversaries? It's Father's Day, and so we pray God's blessing upon all fathers, and especially today we want to be mindful of those who've, who've lost their earthly fathers and are grieving this in this season. But thanks be to God for all of the men who influence our lives in so many ways. <coughs> there are others. I'm happy to report that the youth mission trip will be returning this afternoon. Half of their stuff, well not even half, about a third of their stuff uh, returned from Texas with one of the parents who was, um, who was on a, a personal trip down there. And so they brought back um, some of their things and they, the rest of the items and the students will all be coming back with their sponsors this afternoon. So I probably should include them too. That's important. We are grateful that uh, for all of the prayers, you know, uh, last week at 8 o'clock service, we didn't know what lost attire meant. Throughout the week, we found out that an axle broke and a tire went across four lanes of highway without any incident. So um, certainly God's hand of protection was over them and um, over the other drivers. Uh, thanks be to God. I know they're going to be very anxious to get home, and um, I pray that that's not the only story that they are excited about sharing. I'm praying that they will have all kinds of stories to lift up, and so we lift them up to God today. Um, also, uh, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I had some friends who were in church, uh, Pat and Deb Cunningham. They were here because they were going to the graduation of the first little girl that I ever baptized back in Stanton, Nebraska, and they happened to stop here on the way. Uh, we were very saddened to learn this past week that Pat Cunningham was the gentleman who passed away in the motorcycle accident between Lincoln and Omaha. And so I would just ask prayers for Deb and for uh, their children, Stephanie and Bradley, and as well as um, the grandchildren who are grieving so much right now. Are there other prayer concerns to lift up today? Yes. So prayers for Judy's sister, Cindy, of Colorado, who was in an accident and has some broken bones that she's healing from. Lord, have mercy. Yes. So for Alan and Jean traveling mercies as you go to pay your respects for your cousin Amy and also uh, 
just for all who are traveling in this season. Doesn't it feel good to be able to get out and get away for a little while and be able to do those things? So thanks be to God. And, it is, and that's a joy that me being new here and I get to look out and see faces. <laughs> you know, not, hello, who are you? <laughs> no idea. So that's a joy I have. Wait, who, whose eyes are yes, those? Yes, whose eyes are those? Yeah. <laughs> Don't change your hairstyle because I'd never know who you are if you're going to do that. Just do it <laughs> Thanks be to God. Oh, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, it is Father's Day. And we thank you for our earthly fathers who have raised us and influenced our lives in so many ways. We thank you, God for the guys that you are raising up to be godly men who know you and honor you, who have faith and hope and love in their hearts and pass that on to all that they associate with. Gracious God, on this Father's Day, we celebrate you, our Heavenly Father, Creator God, Parent God, who loves us so much. And we are grateful that you love us through all of our challenges and trials and insecurities as well as through the celebrations in our lives. So God, bless all fathers this day. Help them to feel your presence in powerful ways and to, and to know that they have been on a path with you that will continue to be blessed. And God, we, we lift up the youth mission trip, and we are so grateful for your hand of protection that was over them last Sunday as they were traveling. We thank you for the amazing work that they did in, in Texas, and we pray for their safe return this day. God, help them to, to share these stories of, of how you were working in their lives, in travel, in work, and even in their play. Lord, as, as we come before you, we want to be reminded this day of your hand that guides and leads, especially as we remember this day those who are grieving. So be with all whose hearts are sad this day, whose hearts may even become a little bitter from what they've experienced. God, hold us in your loving arms when we need it most. Bless the opportunities to travel, to see family and friends this summer, and for us to praise you for getting through this past year that has been so hard on so many levels. Gracious God, Hear our prayers and help us to join our hearts together as we remember our family prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to that time in our service that, that we have an opportunity to return our thanks and to share our blessings with God and with church and with community. I'm going to invite our ushers to bring the offering plates forward, and I'm going to invite Rocky and Cindy to bring the helmets, and we're going to be passing the offering plates as well as the helmets this day. Uh, so please be generous as you are able.
let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we are and all that we have, that we may praise you with our whole lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated for the reading of the word of God today. And before we do that, I was reminded that I forgot a couple of slides, and so we thank the Switzer family for the altar flowers today. And also we pray for those churches that are part of our prayer connection this week. Good morning. Join with me as we dive deeper into God's word with this morning's scripture lesson, the first chapter of Ruth, beginning at the sixth verse. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-laws, Go back, each of you, to your mother's homes. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you find rest in the home of another husband. She kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I had thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you from me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them, and the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth, the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was just beginning. May God add a blessing to the hearing and understanding of his word. Amen. Would you please join me in prayer? Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst. And open our hearts that we might know your spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. With these words of great love and devotion, Ruth agreed to follow Naomi. Today's story is a powerful one in our new sermon series, Are We There Yet? This summer we are entering into stories that remind us of our spiritual journey and especially those threshold and transitional moments in the Bible where God's people were experiencing that time between an ending and a new beginning. So far in June we've heard from Adam and Eve being banished and Noah and his family being flooded. And this week we are witnesses to Naomi and Ruth being grieved. Now, I have to admit this may be a difficult passage for us to hear on Father's Day, especially when the men in the story die unexpectedly. But there's hope in the story, I promise. Now, we need to remember that Naomi, her husband Elimelech, and their sons Malon and Kilian were, found themselves in a drought and a severe famine in Judah. This forced them to seek work, and it forced them to seek food elsewhere. Soon, they were immigrants, and they were foreigners in Moab. 
And while there, their sons married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. Then Naomi's husband died. And about ten years later, both of her sons also died. There were also some other important things that were happening that lead to the context of our focus passage. Naomi was now a widow without any blood relatives in a foreign land. She had to consider the social, economic, and cultural implications of this. She would not have any financial support to sustain herself or her daughters-in-law, nor did they have any legal protection. So our focus passage then reminds us of that time when the Lord had come to the aid of the people by providing food for them. This meant that Naomi now had a choice. She could stay in the foreign land of Moab or she could return to her homeland. There can be no doubt that the decisions around this journey were not easy. These women had hopes and dreams for their families and now they were shattered. Naomi was heartbroken, yet realized that it was very important for her to return to Judah. Now, from the land of Moab to Bethlehem was about 50 miles. Perspective is important here. Traveling by car, it would take less than an hour. Traveling by bike, we could find out how long it would take by asking one of our numb riders, or we could even ask our own Terry Smith how long it would take. But traveling by foot, it would probably take 17 to 20 hours, thus a few days travel for these women. The daughters-in-law chose to follow Naomi, though as they journeyed down the road, she urged them to go back. Orpah did, in fact, return to Moab, yet Ruth clung to Naomi. And she said again, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. Ruth's insistence on going with Naomi has reminded generations that the God of Israel and Judah inspires and blesses. Ruth wanted what Naomi had in terms of her faith, leaving her homeland to become a foreigner in the land with its own implications. Certainly for both of these women, there were far more questions than answers, yet they trusted and believed in what God would provide. But it's always been interesting to me that Ruth chose this difficult path. It would have been easier for her to stay in Moab, where she certainly could have remarried and continued her life closer to her family and her friends, as well as her culture and religion. Even today, Ruth's words serve as a powerful witness of clinging to family and friends and faith. Interestingly enough, Ruth's name means companion, friend, vision of beauty. Interestingly enough, for, Na for Ruth, she was more than a companion to Naomi as they returned to Bethlehem. Ruth became Naomi's hope for the future. And when they arrived in Bethlehem, Peter asked, or people asked, can this be Naomi? They recognized her, though her grief changed her forever, didn't it? Naomi even insisted that people call her Mara because she was very bitter. She said, I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Even though Naomi trusted God, she still felt distressed that God had allowed her to be afflicted in such a way. For us today, we must acknowledge how Naomi and Ruth were grieved. They faced grief in losing their spouses, identities, hopes, dreams, and future. In her grief, Naomi makes a courageous decision to return to her land. Yet Ruth's decision is very bold. She adopted Naomi's land, culture, and faith, and with that, all of the promises that Naomi held as a God-fearing woman. They returned to Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. This was another sign of hope for them. They could glean the fields. And with a little prayer and persistence, perhaps Naomi could secure a husband for Ruth and possibly redeem this terribly sad situation. Now in this sermon series, we've been asking ourselves, are we there yet? Certainly for Naomi and Ruth, they still had a ways to go. 
Yet the hope of redemption that they anticipated needs to speak to us too as we claim some of the lessons from this passage in the form of questions. First, what do we do with grief? Right now we find ourselves in a time between the pandemic and figuring out what we're going to do in the post-pandemic season. We readily admit that many things have happened this past year that have left us feeling all kinds of emotions and trying to figure out where God is leading us. While so many things are returning back to normal, we know that there are some things that honestly will never be the same. When we are grieved, sometimes we find ourselves full and sometimes we find ourselves empty. We just need to believe and to trust that the Lord God is going to be there for us, helping us to find tools and resources that we need to refuel to say to stay spiritually connected with our creator and our redeemer and our sustainer. The second question is when should we choose the difficult path? We need to reflect on the times in our lives that we have chosen the road less traveled by. We need to remember though that it is always the right time to do the right thing and that is not always easy. When we think about some of the bigger social and political conversations from this past year, we can't help but think about how we need to be standing up and speaking out against injustices and doing the right thing, even when it is difficult. Our MICA Corps interns are going to be introducing themselves in a few moments, but they're also going to pre present to us this day, and it will be on the video later for those who are worshiping online. They're going to remind us of the ways that we can engage in conversations and opportunities for us to make a difference. And then the third question is, where do we find hope? We readily admit that there are times in our lives when we feel utterly hopeless and helpless. We feel like we're all alone and that no one knows what we are thinking and feeling. We must remember that, that our God is never going to leave us nor forsake us. God is going to provide a path to redeem us, though not in the ways that we ever expect. We do find hope in the proverbial rest of the story of Naomi and Ruth too. In Bethlehem, at this season in their lives, Naomi and Ruth will find a new beginning. They will find God honoring Boaz, and he becomes a kinsman redeemer for Ruth. So why is this so important? Because of the end of Ruth, chapter 4, verses 18 through 22. This, then, is the family line of Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Aminadab, Aminadab the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, Boaz the father of Obed, Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of of David. Yep, that David. And from Matthew 1.17, we hear, thus were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile in Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. Now that is definitely something that we can celebrate this Father's Day. So may we remember those earthly men who have influenced our lives, and may we always remember our Heavenly Father who loves us, redeems us, and gives us hope. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to introduce and welcome our Micah Corps interns. Come on up. They're going to be giving us uh, just a little snapshot of what they're going to be talking about um, during the Sunday School Hour today, our Sunday Jam Hour. And good morning. I let them sleep in just a little bit longer. <laughs> good morning, everyone. My name... Close. Okay. My name is Mulu Bannister. Um, I'm originally from Gambela, Ethiopia, um, but most of my life I grew up in um, western Kansas on a farm. Um, and I'll let my partner John introduce himself. 
Good morning. Um, my name is John Finch. I'm originally from Ukraine. Um, I'm originally from Ukraine, but I live in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I'm a sophomore at the University of Omaha studying religion and communication. Um, an intern for Micah Kors this summer, focusing on immigration and anti-racism. So um, if you join us later today, um, we will go in depth a little bit about who we are as interns, um, why we joined Micah Corps, and then we'll also talk about the um, immigration, anti-racism, and how that's intertwined in, um, in the Bible. Um, we'll go into depth about, you know, um, sharing with you immigration stories, and um, then like really to, um, talking to you guys about uh, like, you know, call to action and how we can, um, you know, take action and how we, um, to make a difference in the world that we live in. So we really just invite everybody to come and join us and hear that what we have to say. Um, and so we hope to see everybody there. Would you please welcome our Micah Core <laughs> interns who are here today? Yes. And again, please have an opportunity, if you can't stay during the Sunday Jam Hour, um, please plan to uh, greet them right after service. But let's rise and let's sing our closing song today, God of Grace and God of Glory. Receive our benediction. Grief never ends, but it changes. It is a passage, not a place to stay. Grief is not a sign of weakness nor a lack of faith. It is the price of love. In all of our liminal seasons, may the grace of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you, strengthen you, and redeem you. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.